Your morning news now on this Tuesday. A Wisconsin firm will file suit against the city of La Crosse if the council doesn't abandon its conversion therapy ordinance. An attorney for the Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty says the ban violates free speech and religion clauses of the First Amendment. The council narrowly passed the ordinance in July and the mayor signed it, but it is currently not in effect. After its approval, the council met in closed session again to discuss potential changes to the ordinance. Members said ordinance language made it vulnerable to legal threats. Will says updated language won't be enough. I think they're going to have a very difficult time making this ordinance legal. Uh, for example, uh, in our view, this ordinance is preempted uh, by state law. Will says the state legislature has blocked a rule like this in the past. They also say a federal court of appeals struck down a similar ordinance in Florida. News 8 now contacted Mayor Mitch Reynolds for comment. He declined our request for an interview and asked us to contact the legislation's sponsor. The city plans to meet in September to discuss the issue. Wisconsin's Department of Health Services issued a public advisory about the increase in overdose deaths. Over the past two years, fentanyl overdoses increased 97%. This year, eight deaths in La Crosse. The county's interim county medical examiner says dealers add fentanyl to their products because it gives a high effect very quickly. Recently legalized by Governor Tony Evers, the county health department started distributing fentanyl test strips. Experts say the test strips have found traces of fentanyl in marijuana. It's not only just in heroin anymore, it's now turning out to be in everything. Lubinsky says it's important to continue raising awareness about fentanyl. If you or a loved one are struggling with addiction, you can call the substance abuse hotline at the number you see below. Watch out for some areas of valley fog this morning, reducing those visibilities on your morning commutes. Uh, the rest of the day, though, looks mostly sunny after that fog clears out and temperatures in the low 80s this afternoon. Talk about crossing the finish line. Organizers of the Thunder Ride presented a big check to the Gunderson Medical Foundation on Monday. The ride raises money to help families with diabetic kids who get their care at both Gunderson and Mayo. Gunderson social worker Sheila Durand, who works with families with diabetic kids, says the community support means a lot. It's really important for um, uh, La Crosse uh, area to understand that this is an expensive um, diagnosis for the family and we want the best care for the kids to give them the best chance so it just supplements that and really helps out. The Thunder Ride took place back on July 30th. The school year is less than two weeks away and West Salem staff are getting ready. On Monday, they heard from the 2018 National Distinguished Principal of the Year for Minnesota, Kurt Slater. Slater has worked as a teacher, dean of students, associate principal, and principal. The West Salem District started a new initiative last year to improve staff, student, and community mental health. Slater understands the need for strong, confident school staff because of the impact they had on his life. I grew up in a very dysfunctional home in my childhood and I took a lot of that dysfunction to school. And so I was sometimes the last kid that teachers wanted on their class list. And I'm in front of them today because of educators like them. All of those people made an impact in my life in order to be where I am today. And a reminder, you can help send kids back to class with everything they need to succeed. Join News 8 now at the Onalaska Walmart on Friday, August 26th to stuff the bus. We're going to be there all day to accept your donations of school supplies, cleaning supplies, and cash. We have a list of suggested donations right on our website at news8000.com. The City of La Crosse is hosting an open house today focused on flood mitigation. The public is invited to speak with city officials, a consulting team, and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Their plan focuses on finding areas at risk of flooding and reducing future damage. You can see a draft of the flood mitigation plan online. We also have that link at news8000.com as well. And as you head out the door, just be aware of that fog here this morning that still is lingering across much of the Cooley region through at least the late morning hours. Then we can expect lots of sunshine with skies turning bright and sunny later this afternoon. Temperatures warming up to a high of 84 degrees and light and variable winds. And a reminder, don't forget to keep up with the news of the day at news8000.com as well as our News 8 Now First Alert weather app. And we have those storm chances returning this yeah. week, Garrett. Yeah, that's right. So something we'll have to keep our eyes on towards the mid and latter half of this week. Yeah, stay weather aware. We're going to have the latest coming up on News 8 Now at noon as well. CBS Mornings follows us here. And of course, Derek and I will see you right back here tomorrow at 5 a.m. We hope you have a great day.